All right, in this video, I'm going to dive through the process to clone and create a gated content program in Marketo with the new process using the Marketo landing pages. So a quick overview of what you'll be doing when you're setting up a new gated content program. You'll be creating a Marketo program, updating the tokens, and syncing to Salesforce campaign, editing the registration and thank you page URLs, activating the smart campaign, updating the Salesforce campaign, and then testing the live registration page and flows. And then separately, a different issue would be to add the new content to the resource page, but we won't be covering that in this video. So to start, we're going to clone the template for the gated content program. So clone, and we'll clone it to a campaign folder and the cam and right here you'll name the program. So it'll go YYYY underscore type underscore content name. So essentially it'd be like 2020 underscore ebook underscore um, CI best practices. And we'll put it in the folder for content marketing. And you can add your epic here if you want to do that, get that out of the way. It's nice to reference in your program so that anybody coming to it in Marketo can quickly reference it in GitLab. So we'll create. And then the next step will be to update the tokens and sync to Salesforce. You can do this in either order, but I prefer, prefer to just sync to Salesforce, have that out of the way, and then update the Marketo tokens. The Marketo tokens, We've tried to make this process as efficient as possible by using a character limit checker. So anybody in content marketing, field marketing, whoever is creating the copy for the landing page would be writing the copy in here. So as you type it in, it'll tell you the minimum and maximum for that section of the landing page. And that will be, that will confirm that whatever copy is written is going to fit well in the page and meet best practices for conversion. I've just copied this, um, the example into the actual um, piece that then types down to the copy paste values that you would be using for your tokens. So this all might not make sense yet, but when we look at the tokens in Marketo, You'll see it in this exact order and you'll be able to copy paste this straight into the program, making this really efficient and super fast and confirming that you won't have to go back and forth a bit to try to get the right character limit for the landing page, which should make everyone more efficient in launching new gated content. So now we have our program cloned and it has all of the related assets, smart campaigns, and this is actually an archive, so I'm going to convert to an archive folder. Ignore that part. Basically, the main things in your program are another registration page, the thank you page, and the confirmation for Path Factory. It, um, it includes a link to Path Factory and the downloaded content uh, smart campaign in Marketo. You may say, oh, why a registration page? It's just to, like, we'll just keep it consistent through all of the programs. So even though they're downloading content, we don't want to get it confused with the page that they're actually downloading the content on, which is the thank you page. We'll just use registration page, meaning the form is on that page. Thank you page, meaning this is the page after you register, after you fill the form. So again, Salesforce campaign, let's quickly sync that over. It's really quick and simple to do it in this manner rather than creating the program or the campaign in Salesforce and then waiting for the sync. So we'll choose create new. Don't have to worry about the name. We'll leave it exactly as it is in Marketo. So leave it as is. Again, you'll drop in the link to your Epic. I don't have one, so I'm just gonna leave that blank. But you'll put in the Epic. You'll update that later in the setup. So save. And that will now create a corresponding and synced campaign in Salesforce. Let's go to the Marketo tokens. Like I said, all of the copy is now included right within this set at the bottom of the character limit checker doc. The person who's requesting the landing page or who's basically the owner of the campaign landing page um, or campaign content landing page will then be copying and pasting this into the issue. So it should be really quick and simple for the person creating the program to copy paste all of this into Marketo. So I'll take this. I'll give you a quick example of a few places where you're creating this in the Marketo token. Oh, actually I have the exact same copy that was in the character limit checker. 
It'll, everything that's fitting in right here will cascade throughout the assets and the smart campaigns in the program. So the reason this is more efficient is you can update bullet one, two, three, four. If you put those tokens into the confirmation email and the registration page and what the heck, if you put it in automation in the campaign, it would all flow throughout so you don't have to replicate so that at a later point, if you needed to update something, you update it in one spot right here and it cascades throughout. You don't have to go edit five different things in the program. So it's much more efficient. I'm not gonna go ahead and update all of this because I think, I hope that you maybe understand this, um, but I will show you the next steps for content gating. So you've now created the Marketo program, you've synced to Salesforce, you would have updated all of these tokens according to the copy that's in the character limit checker or in the issue. And the next step is to update the URL page settings. So go to edit URL settings. You're gonna put it in with a, um, a format of resources dash type of content. So in this case, an ebook dash name of content. So CI best practices. I recommend command A, command C, copy it, let it throw away. We don't need that URL. We're not trying to create a redirect in the admin area, so let's just throw that away. We're gonna then edit the URL tools with the URL tools, edit the URL settings for the thank you page, make it exactly the same. So again, resources dash type dash name of content, and then we'll add a dash, oops, dash think dash you dot HTML, hit save. And now you'll notice that it's reflected in the live um, URL settings. So here we go in testing, or we're not going to test actually yet. We're going to activate the smart campaign. Click to download content. You don't need to check this. I'll review it. But essentially, because we have put tokens throughout the automation, you won't need to do anything here. All you'll need to do is hit schedule, activate. But I'll just quickly go through what the smart list and flow is so that you have some understanding of what the program is doing. So the smart list is listening for a fills out form, is any, on the web page within the program. Because this is cloning and using the Marketo landing page within the program, it automatically picks up that the registration page is what it's listening for. So no change needed there. Follow The flow will then see send the confirmation email so again because that's built into the program you don't have to do anything just let it flow it'll remove from flow if they're at GitLab because we don't need to inflate the numbers in the program so let's just pull them out at that point they'll receive the confirmation email but they won't go through the rest of the steps next step change program status so we'll change the program status to downloaded for gated content that's a good way to double check that your Visible attribution touch points are matching up with the downloads and make sure that everything's firing correctly for attribution reporting. Interesting moment, we'll apply. Downloaded the content type. So this again is actually included within the tokens and the content title. So again, that's in the tokens. So no need to update that. Change data value acquisition program will become CI best practices, this program. The person source and initial source will update to content type SFDC. The reason that's separated is, for example, maybe we have a new content type, but we don't really want to go through all the steps just for maybe a one-time thing. I know in Marketo, looking at some of the content types, we have lots of eBooks, lots of reports, lots of videos and white papers. We only have one assessment. We didn't create a new person source for the assessment or the estimator. And Really important here is if you put in a value that is not recognized by the Salesforce field, then you will actually throw an error and the, the record will not sync to Salesforce. So it's really important that we only use a specific set of values for the content type SFDC. And you'll see those, I'll show them in a minute, moment. You'll see those reflected in the list here. So as of right now in Salesforce, the only options are, where is it, content type, SFDC. And I made a note here, so hopefully you will recognize it. White paper, report, video, ebook, general. So for the assessment, for the estimator, we use general, but for the rest, we use the ones that are recognized by the Salesforce field. 
All right, so we've created the Marketo program. We've updated the tokens. We've synced to Salesforce campaign. The next step, and actually another step we've done is updated the URLs for the registration page and the thank you page. Next up, we'll activate, nope, already did that. Activate the smart campaign. It goes so fast. This is so efficient, right? We'll update the Salesforce campaign. So if the, I have a shortcut here because I use this quite often. There is a, campaign view for gated content and in there it's in order by created date or maybe that's just for me because i've set, done this so often campaign name you'll find the last created campaign at the top which should be your campaign so we'll click to the campaign and we'll update the things that are required of the salesforce campaign which is let's see referring to the handbook page, which you should be referring to as you follow this video along. You'll update the campaign owner to be yourself. Just to note, if you start editing a bunch of fields and you change the owner while you're in the middle of it, it won't save. So I go ahead and change the campaign owner immediately. So I should be the only Jackie Bragnola. Most likely that's the case. Um, then we'll update the activated field. Or Honestly, everything is pretty much set. You just need to check that it's as it should be. So activated should be checked. Description, it should include your Epic already. I usually include the landing page URL for the registration at this point in the setup. So I would copy paste this into the description and shortcut is to just double click on the field. So Epic, you already have it, landing page. You put that in there. I'm actually gonna cancel. I'm afraid someone might see this and think it's real. Um, start date should be the date of launch. So maybe the date that you're creating this or the day after. And the next one should be the following year. So it would be 7, 23, 2021. 20, and the last step would be budget to cost. So this is an analyst report. You should receive the cost of the analyst report from the analyst relations team. If it's a competitive PDF, get it from the, um, the competitive team and so forth. If it's in-house, you can add in zero as the budget of cost. I'm gonna check with marketing ops and make sure that I'm right on that, but whatever is accurate is going to be in the handbook, so just check that. And from here, we're all good to go. Hit save, everything is as it should be. And we'll go back to the registration page because it's time to test it. We'll view this page. You'll check that the copy that you put into all the tokens is reflected across the board. So right now you'll see content title. That's because in the tokens, my content title is content title. And this is a short value statement of what's inside that will align to subtitle. So you'll see the tokens reflect in the landing page. All of this is just what I have in the tokens and we'll go ahead and test the form. So. Everything is looking right. Download asset type now. Again, that's also built into the tokens with the um, asset type. Where did they put that? It's in here somewhere, or I'll check on that. Um, we'll go ahead and fill out the form. So I'm going to use, let's see, George Blues, fill that in, job title, uh, whatever. Active, fill it in. I agree that we get on privacy policy. I'll download and then I will come to the thank you page. So it will be the page that you created. The thank you for downloading this. Uh, it will say click here to view your ebook, for example. And right now it says this is as it will appear for the end user because that's what my content type currently says. When you click that, you'll be brought to a Path Factory link. This doesn't work right now because our tokens say Path Factory link without the email tracking part. So when you're testing, you should be able to see this. I may do another rendition of this video that shows with live URLs. And from there, you'll be testing the Path Factory link, checking that the lead does not receive a pop-up when they are a known user and checking the confirmation email but more to come in a later video. That's the start of setting up a gated content program with the landing pages, follow-up email, and all the automation.